Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we've seen how to find the centroid of a particular shape, such as a semisphere or a cone like we have up there in the corner, we're now going to try to find the centroid of something like this. In this case, we have a cylinder that has a semisphere hollowed out on one side. We can usually subdivide these, these shapes into individual pieces and notice that we can take, for example, the entire cylinder and subtract from that a semisphere. Now, how do we find the centroid of something like this? Well, let's watch and see how we do that. In this case, we have perfect symmetry about the x-axis and the z-axis, but we don't according to the y-axis, so we're going to find the y-centroid of this object. We need to first subdivide that into, similar, into familiar shapes. So in one case, we have a cylinder, we'll call that shape number one. The second case, we're going to have a semisphere, we'll call that shape number two. Notice that shape number two is actually hollowed out from shape number one, so we're going to call that it having a negative volume. So watch and see how that works. First of all, we need to find the volume of shape number one, which is a cylinder. That would be, let's see here, volume number one. That's equal to the area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height, and the height in this case is three times r. So the volume of that would be 3 pi r cubed, and that's the volume of the cylinder, 3 pi r cubed. How about the volume of the semisphere? Well, we know the volume of the whole sphere is, let's see here, v sub 2, so that would be 4 thirds pi r cubed for a full sphere, but when we divide it by 2, we get 2 thirds pi r cubed, which would be the volume of the semisphere. But since it's been hollowed out, it's not really there, it's been hollowed out, we need to subtract that volume, give it a negative volume, negative 2 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, now we need to find the centroid of each of those objects relative to the origin in this case. We're going to do relative to the origin. So the centroid of the cylinder would be halfway between the bottom and the top. That would be 1 and a half times r, or 3 over 2r. 3 over 2r, starting from the origin, it would be right halfway in between. Now the centroid for the semisphere, the best way to find that is to go all the way to the top, that would be 3r minus the distance from the, from the flat portion of the semisphere to where the centroid is according to the common formula. It would be 3r over 8 away from the base of that semisphere. So the best way to find that would be y sub 2 is equal to 3r, when we go from the origin all the way to the top, and then we subtract 3r over 8 from that, minus 3 eighths r, which is equal to, well, let's see, we have a common denominator, that would be 8, that would be 24 divided by 8, 24 divided by 8 is equal to 3, times r, minus 3 over 8r, that would be 21 over 8r, that would be the distance from the origin to the centroid of that semisphere, so let's go ahead and put that in here. That would be 21 over 8 times r. Now we're going to multiply the volume times the centroid. When we do that, notice we have 9 divided by 2 pi r to the fourth. 9 divided by 2 pi r to the fourth. And when we multiply these two together, notice we have a negative sign there because we have to subtract that quantity there. 21 divided by 3 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 14 divided by 8, let's see, let me do it on the side here because I think we need to simplify that, minus 2 thirds pi r cubed multiplied times 21 over 8 r, the 3 and the 21 cancel, the 2 and the 8 cancel, that leaves us with 7 over 4, 7 over 4 times pi times r to the fourth power, and it's a negative, because we had the negative over here, that's negative 7 over 4 pi r to the fourth. Now why did we do all that? Well, it turns out that the centroid in the y direction is simply equal to the sum of all the volume of all the objects times the centroid of each of the objects, divided by the total sum of all the volumes. But whenever we have a missing piece that becomes negative volume, so that actually instead of adding that, we would be subtracting that. So in this case, we need to now sum all these volumes up. Notice we have a positive volume and a negative volume. We have 3 pi r cubed. So the sum of the volumes is equal to 3 pi r cubed minus 2 thirds pi r cubed. 
that would be 9 thirds minus 2 thirds, which is 7 thirds pi r cubed. For the net volume, because we have to subtract the missing portion from the cylinder, that's 7 thirds pi r cubed. Now we need to sum up the products of the y coordinate of the centroid of each individual piece multiplied times the volume. Now we add those together. We have 9 halves minus 7 fourths. 9 halves minus 7 fourths is equal to 18 fourths minus 7 fourths, which is 11 fourths. So when we add these together, we get 11 over 4 pi r to the fourth. And finally, we're now ready to find the actual centroid when we divide this quantity by this quantity by definition. This is equal to 11 over 4 pi r to the fourth divided by 7 thirds pi r cubed. Notice the pi's cancel out, 3 of the r's cancel out. Now we have 11 fourths divided by 7 thirds. 11 fourths divided by 7 thirds is the same as multiplying by its inverse. It's time 3 over 7, which is equal to 33 over 28. So this becomes equal to 33 over 28 times r. So a little bit more than an r. So from the origin upward, it's not quite to the halfway point of the cylinder because we have this portion hollowed out here. So it's actually slightly over 1 times r away from the origin, 33 over 28. And that's the centroid in the y direction of this particular object. And that's how it's done.